Hello, this is Kirandeep Kaur and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video, we are going to discuss about the pre-screening questions that are usually asked by a non-technical person. Uh, preferably, sometimes it's the HR or the recruiter who has contacted you regarding the job opening. Usually the first round is the pre-screening round in some of the reputed companies that actually I have also interviewed with. And through my experience, I would like to share some of the pre-screening questions that are asked and some of the tips that we should follow while answering these questions. So without wasting any time, let's move on to our first question. Difference between const, var and lab. So const is, we know that if you want to declare something into JavaScript, we will have to use, you know, var or let or const for that. So const is something that you have used to declare something, but now you do not have the opportunity to change it. And if you will try to change it, you will get an error assignment to um, constant variable, something like that. We can actually check. Let's say um, that's my var three, and now I want to change it to four. And I'm going to run it, but it, it'll just say assignment to constant variable, right? So let and war, that's the difference between const, war and let. But what's the difference between war and let? That's the difference of the scoping. So let is bloke scoped, whereas war is has a global scope. So how can we understand that? We can just have a scope and around that, I'm going to declare one variable. It has a value of four. So now this my variable will only be accessible inside this scope. And if you will try to access it outside the scope, it's going to give you an error that um, my war is not defined. But if you will do that same with war, you are not going to get any error and you will get whatever the value of that my variable is. So that's the difference between const war and let. Now here, you do not have to actually implement these examples in front of the uh, whoever the person who have, whoever is asking the question because the first thing usually the pre-screening round is going to be a telephonic round and the most of the cases is going to be telephonic there there'll be no coding screen being available to you and the person who is asking the question is also a non-technical person so he or she has been given the answers and the questions and you have to take a note and actually answer accordingly because that person does not have any knowledge of what he's asking he's just trying to match the keywords that the technical person might have given so in that um, sense we are going to discuss here that what exactly should you speak while giving answers to the pre-screening questions taking into consideration that that person does not have the entire knowledge of the topic so the const var and let you just simply say that const is something that if you have assigned some variable you cannot change that uh, throughout the scope of that program and let and const has a different uh, let and var has a uh, difference in in their scoping so let is block scoped and war is has a global scope that's it nothing else than that it has to be straightforward on the point you should not lose the track so that's our first one difference between const war and let second one uh, can you give me some example of the falsy values and can you give me an example of some of the truthy values so we all know that zero is falsy minus zero is falsy zero n that's a big int that's also falsy empty string is falsy null is falsy null refers to the absence of any value undefined is falsy and anything that's not true is also false. And yeah, and nan, n a n, that's not a number is also faulty. So you should just give all these examples to that person. And truthy, you can say one is truthy, true is truthy, uh, and also false. I forget that in in falsy value, false is also faulty. So um, if we say here zero is falsy, minus zero is falsy. 0n that's a begin is falsy empty string is falsy null the absence is falsy undefined is falsy false is also false uh, any n is also false and anything that's not true is also false right and for the truthy you're just gonna say one and true and anything that has value is truthy right that's it moving on to the third question difference between double equals and triple equals 
you should not say anything else except the fact that double equals compare just the values and triple equal compares the value as well as the types for example uh, let's say you have a variable that's my variable and its value is 2 and you have another variable and its value is again 2 but that's a string so if you will compare both of these values with double equals it's gonna give you true because it's just considering the two equals two yes it is but is my word triple equals my word two no it's not because that's a number and my word two is a string so you just simply say that triple uh, triple equal compares the type along with the values whereas double equals just compare the value next question let's move on to the fourth one is going to be what is arguments object in javascript so usually in pre-screening question you will see the patterns of what is what are very straightforward questions so what is argument object in javascript simply say the number of arguments that are passed to a function you can get that from the arguments object we can get that um, for your understanding so any examples that i'm giving here you should understand that you should not give uh, examples in your pre-screening it just has to be the theoretical part that I'm telling you you should be on the track just try to complete it in one or two line so my orgs um, let's say you just have one two three arguments and here you have four so if you console log arguments here you're gonna get this one two three and four this is going to be if you just want to get the first uh, parameter that passed to this function just use zero or one for the second one two for the third one like you get the idea of it so that's what argument object is in javascript and that's it but for the follow-up question or maybe if you answered it correctly there might be chances of, of a follow-up question that how are you going to do that same thing in ES6? I don't want to use arguments object. That's again simple. You're going to use this spread operator for this. And this is the way to do that. And here, if you will just use orgs, it's gonna give you this. One, two, three, four in an array. Cool. And if you just want to get the first element, the idea of that is same as the argument or the same as how you actually fetch values from a typical array right so that makes sense uh, for the arguments object in javascript one other thing in that you can actually add it that uh, arguments object ha also has a length property so if you just do arguments dot length you are going to get the number of elements the length of the number of parameters that are passed to that function so if you are going to do this console log arguments dot length it's going to give you four and that's it so it has a length property but just the length property you cannot use any methods on arguments uh, object uh, that are for the that are array compatible you cannot do that there's just the length property that is for the array as well and for the arguments object as well but you cannot use that same um, for each or map sort of methods that are, that are for the arrays on an arguments object you do not have to explain all this in your pre-screening just the two or three line that actually matches what has been asked so whatever i'm telling you is in details and that's for your understanding moving again we have explained prototypal inheritance so answering this question can be very tricky because this is pre-screening you have to wind up your answer in mere two to three lines you have to be on track and usually that's a tip here for the pre-screening questions that if if the question is like explain prototypal inheritance that means that you have to be on track first of all and you have to give the exact answer because in this way there is no direct answer that that was given to, to that person from any technical person there are chances that uh, that person might have given some keywords so that person whom you are answering must be looking for some of the keywords that you are giving in your answer for example prototypal chain for example we have a private property called prototype that's it so how are we going to answer this one each object has private property which holds a link to another object 
that's called its prototype. That prototype object has prototype of its own and so on until an object is reached with null as its prototype property. And now if any object is created from uh, taking a reference from the another object, then that object that created object is going to have all the properties that its prototype has and that's the prototypal inheritance that's it so first line should be you have a private property called prototype second should be your prototypal chain and third should be one line explaining prototypal inheritance that if you have created object taking instance from the already created object then that object that newly created object is going to have all the properties that you have created from where you have created that object from these three lines and you are done with the answers so that's actually a skill here not just for the pre-screening but actually for all, all of the rounds that you actually face in interview to be very precise with what should you answer so for this prototypal inheritance you can say a lot but what actually is the interviewer looking for especially in pre-screening where the person is a non-technical person and he just knows some words and you have kind of have to describe it in a very basic in a very high level um that's it that's for the prototypal inheritance once is your prototype property prototype private property then one line for the prototypal chain and the one line for the inheritance that it takes all the properties from its inherited object cool that's our prototypal inheritance next question is what is this mean in javascript the questions are literally going to be like this as i've already told you what is what are is it examples of that sort of stuff okay so what is this keyword in javascript so if the question is straightforward the answer has to be straightforward that this refers to the current scope from where you are actually in the program the value of the, this keyword is uh did used at the time of runtime so the value has been given to this during runtime binding and you cannot actually assign anything during execution during compile time right so that's the this keyword you should not just say anything else in that the one to two lines are sufficient for answering this question moving on to the next question what is the value of this in global context for example uh, if I just say console log this, what is going to be the value of this? The answer is going to be a null object for the node environment. So the, the here I'm just showing you um, in, in the node environment is just going to give you an empty object. But if you uh, log it in your console, in your browser console, in the browser environment, it's going to give you window. Nothing else than that. Again, answer, uh, next question difference between call and apply so uh, this is a very actually very deep topic and I have also uh, created one video on this on how to implement bind and there I have completely described it and apply but for the scope of the pre-screening answers is just going to be that call takes uh, the number of arguments in a comma separated fashion whereas apply just take an array of arguments that are being passed to a function and how, why do we use call and apply? So we have already discussed this as refers to the current scope. So if you want to bind the value of this to a specific context, you can use call and apply for that. In the scope of this video, we cannot go into details of call and apply. Thus, the, this question can be asked as a pre-screening, tell me the difference between call and apply. And you just have to tell that call takes the number of arguments that are passed to a function in comma separated fashion, whereas for the apply, it is an array of all the arguments. Next question is going to be, what is going to be, uh, what is the data structure of DOM? Document object model. That's a tree, unary tree uh, for, for a very specific, but if you will just say tree, that also works. Next question, what is stack and queue? What is stack and queue? So stack is has a LIFO phenomena. If you're a computer science graduate, you definitely should know this, but you should know this in any case, actually, uh, if you're going for a JavaScript interview. Stack and queue. Stack, it has a last in first out. 
structure. It's a data structure that follows the last in first out phenomena. And Q is also a data structure that follows the first in first out phenomena. If you answer that correctly, they are going to ask you, how are you going, how can you implement that in JavaScript? Because JavaScript doesn't give you a direct data structure like arrays, you know, for, for stacks and queues. So how, you, how are you going to do that in JavaScript? So you can do that in JavaScript using arrays. Why? Because uh, for the scope, I'll, I'll tell you how to answer that. But for your understanding, let's just actually see. So that's the LIFO and the FIFO. And last in first out, so you can use push pop methods for of JavaScript of arrays in JavaScript. Or you can use unshift and shift methods for um, getting something into the very beginning of the array or getting something out from the very beginning of the array. If you want to push something into the last of the array, you can use push. If you want to pop something from the last of the array, you can use pop method. So you can use these four methods to implement stack and queues. And that's it. But for the scope of this answer, you just have to tell the stack and queue is this, 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 LIFO and FIFO. And we are can we can implement this in arrays using the four methods of um, arrays. That's the push, pop, shift and unshift. Next question. How can you tell if the image is loaded on the page? Let's say you are loading some image. How can you tell? What can you do to tell that the image is loaded? The answer to this is going to be we can use some callback and we can console log something into that callback, uh, something like email successfully loaded. So using callback is the answer to that question. Next question, what is event delegation and what are its performance trade offs? So event delegation is let's say you have an unordered list, you have one event handler on that, then inside that unordered list like this, you have three listed items like this sorry and you have event handlers on each of these listed item and you have event handler on unordered list as well so doing that will affect the performance definitely so what you can do instead of that you can just use event handler on this unordered list you can fetch the id of this so anytime if any of these listed items will click this event handler will automatically be executed because of the event delegation that is in the JavaScript and that will actually enhance and boost the performance of the page a lot. So that's it. That that's the answer that you need to give for it. Right. The last question for this video is going to be what is worker and how sorry, uh, when would you use one that makes more sense? When would you use one? So answering this question in a very dramatic way, you just have to say a web worker is a JavaScript that runs in the background independently of other scripts without affecting the performance of the page. You can continue to do whatever you want, like clicking or selecting things or etc. while the web worker will always runs in the background. You can also give an example. Uh, if it is asked or even if it is not, you can just simply give an example like you can just keep counting numbers in the background and meanwhile you can do whatever you want to do on the UI. Right. So that's how uh, that's what web worker is and that's how it's needed. So these are some of the questions that are actually asked very repetitively in pre-screening uh, interviews. If you have any questions or queries regarding any questions or if you want me to actually implement some of the questions in details for your better understanding, I can do that. Please let me know that in the comment sections below. Uh, I'll see you soon in my next video. Till then, take care. Thank you so much.